Hey guys, welcome to the video. Uh, today we're going to be doing a light paint shoot for a Ferrari F430. Just wanted to do a behind the scenes video, show you some of the gear that I use and just how it's done. Uh, so sit back and enjoy the video. So what I use for the lighting is the Aperture Amarine ALH198. So in the box comes with a bag. Just unzip it. Pretty much. So you got your light. That's the back. Now it opens up. So for this you can use AA batteries. Um, I've got chargeable energizers in there at the moment. You can also use the Sony NPF batteries which are also chargeable. They do cost a lot more but they do last a lot longer. You can buy different size variants. It also comes with two diffusers. Uh, you got the white diffuser and the orange diffuser, depending on obviously the subject you're shooting and like the background as well. They'll come into play when choosing the different colors. Put it on, simply just clips on like that, nice and easy. The thing I like about this light is it's adjustable. It also comes with an adjustable ball head, which pretty much goes onto the to the bottom here. Slides on. And then if it's sitting on top of your camera, you just adjust it to where you want it. Tighten it up, and it's good to go. And the second type of light I like to use is a normal floodlight. Uh, they are a lot cheaper. It's pretty much it's got an adjustable stand. There you go. And the thing I like about these lights the most is they're chargeable and they're cheap. They only cost about $50 Australian. Uh, you can get them in any hardware store. They're portable and they're waterproof so that's a good one. So that's all the lighting that I use. Uh, so next I'll just show you the camera. For behind the scenes, this is what I use. Uh, it's the Sony RX106. It's a small camera, does 4K video. Um, screen flips up in case you need it. Rotates both ways, up and down. In case you want to do high shots. Okay. Has a 24 to 200 millimeter lens and also does slow motion. Uh, for the main camera, I use a Sony A7S2. Uh, 24 to 70 mil lens. That's what I use for shooting the photos and also my videos. Now, the products that I use for mounting my camera on top of my other camera. Uh, Got a magic arm by Nuwa. Pretty much just twist the twist the knob. You can mount it however you like. So you can either use the mount here, or that can actually screw off. You can also mount it onto here. Just twist it to where you want it, and it locks it in place. You can't move it. The camera won't fall off. Next you can use the small rig, works exactly the same way, it's actually my friend Raz, thank you Raz, <laughs> uh, moves around on each side until you lock it, and neither side can move, it's pretty much locked in place, I'll show you how that's set up in a second. Last of all, if you want to shoot live stream like I do. Uh, you can get a cool phone mount for your camera as well. Pretty much if you use the magic arm just screws in the bottom like this. Otherwise you can use a similar ball mount to the aperture. Got this one off Amazon. I'll link it in this description. Works the exact same way. Just twist it. You can move around the ball head. Last of all, I have a 
a cage for the camera. So it's got all these um, all these screws. So any of your attachments, they can screw on. Nice and easy. Basically screws on just like that. And then you use the ball ball head to adjust the camera. So we'll have it like that. Or you can have it sideways. So if you untighten this one, you can then twist it to how you want it. So if you wanted to have it say on this side, like so. So if you wanted to have your phone up this way instead of up this way, no one likes it when you film like this though. <laughs> so perhaps don't do that, but everyone likes landscape. So make sure you keep it upright. <laughs> Otherwise, you get flamed on YouTube. So there you go, you just pull it on like that. Camera just slides in nice and easy through the back. You can just line up the screw on the bottom. Just screw it in. Okay, nice and easy. That's the basic setup that I use for live streaming. So you've got the phone on the top, which you can move around with the screw. You can still shoot like normal, which is good. You can rotate the phone up and down if you need to. The clamp has it nice and tight so it doesn't fall off. If you're shooting, you can always shoot and record live at the same time, which is good. Alright, so now I'm on my iPhone. This is pretty much the setup with the behind the scenes camera. So as you can see, I've got the magic arm attached, camera, and live streaming. thing is how it's set up you can also put this on the other side as well this camera on the other side it's got all these holes that you can put any of these attachments into whether it be on the top as well Good thing is, it's all adjustable as well. Okay, next we have the Joby tripod. It's a small tripod, just so I can put my BTS camera, say on the car or on the floor behind my main camera, just to show you guys what's going on when it's not on top of the camera. Again, it's adjustable. So you unscrew that, level it to how you want it, and then tighten it back up. All the legs are adjustable as well, so if you want it lower, you can adjust it like this. <laughs> it's a bit hard with one hand, unfortunately, sorry. <laughs> so you can adjust it to the height that you want it. And you can also wrap it around objects. like the back of your seat or something like that. So last you want a nice sturdy tripod for the main camera, which is your light paint shooting camera. I use a Weifang. Not the strongest or the most liable one, but it does the job. It's the one that I use. It's got th two adjustments. Lastly, I'd recommend an ND filter. 
This one's a called a circular ND filter. Uh, so as you can see, as you twist it, it goes from the lightest to the darkest, like that. So this screws onto the front of your lens. So my lens is a 67 millimeter, so you'll have to buy a 67 millimeter or whatever size matches your lens, obviously. It's got the markings, so that's the least amount and the most amount. Okay. Now what this is good for is so you don't have to touch the camera to adjust your settings. All you do is slowly slide this because when your camera is on the tripod and you're doing a light paint shoot, you want every photo to be exactly the same in position. So if the camera shakes while you're taking a photo, uh, that's going to cause your camera, like the shots aren't going to line up and it's going to make your life a bit more difficult when putting all the pictures together. <laughs> And next, I would recommend a remote control for your camera. Uh, the reason I say that is when you're doing light paint photos, every time you press the button on your camera, there's a chance that you're gonna, the camera's going to get tilted just slightly or you might get some vibrations in the tripod while you're shooting the photo. And that's going to cause the camera to move and that's going to be either blurry or it's going to be slightly off which is going to be hard to put your photos together you can also use a trigger system it's basically hooks up to your camera and allows you to press the button while you're not touching the camera you can also put it on push it down push it up this is going to lock it in and as long as this is locked in, it's going to continue to open the shutter so you can let more light in. All right, so that's pretty much all that I use. Um, so stick around and we're going to go to location and start with the photo shoot. I'll see you then. Yeah, that's good. Stop. Yep, perfect, man. <laughs> 